بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده Dear respected viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another brand new episode of the program entitled Towards the Origin and to all of those who will be joining us now and later through our Facebook page, YouTube channel and live streaming via our Channel S website It's a live program that has been broadcasted from the studio of Channel S watched on Sky 814 it is also an interactive program where you will be able to participate but via email. Should you have any feedback, suggestion, question, please feel free to email us, which will be appearing shortly at the bottom of your TV screen. But for your convenience, it's towards the origin at chsuk.tv. Our tonight's topic for discussion is nurturing children. A very, very important topic and a very time effective topic, especially when our youth and our children growing up in an age, in a generation where there is constantly a lot of challenges, trials and tribulation. So how are we nurturing them? As parents, what is our responsibility towards educating them, nurturing them, protecting them while growing through their productive adulthood life? All of this and many more, inshallah, we will be aiming to discuss in our tonight's program. And to discuss this topic, we have with us our very honorable and respected guest. He is the graduate of Al-Azhar University, Egypt, respected Imam and Khatib, and in fact, the first British Bangladeshi of the famously known Masjid, which is the London Central Mosque and the Islamic Cultural Center, famously known as Regent's Park Mosque, Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for joining with us so late again. It's my pleasure. Jazakumullah khairan. Um, just to start with, as our topic is nurturing children. Now, children, we know it's an amana, a trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given up to us, given to us, and especially to those people who are fortunate enough to have children because we know not every parent are fortunate enough to have children. We would pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah give this to every, ch uh, every parent and because it's a bounty and blessing and a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, it's a test as well. Yep. Now, as Muslim, how should our approach be towards the children that we are blessed with as a parents. Sakum Allah khairan. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah alladhi akmala lana deenana wa atamma alayna ni'matahu wa radhiya lana al-islam deena. Allahumma radhiyna billahi rabba wa bil-islam deena wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyyan wa rasoola. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. After praising Allah and sending salams and salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه, I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and he has no partners. And I also testify that the Holy Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the final messenger and slave of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to uh, make a dua for every one of you uh, before I begin this program. Um, I would like to say, may Allah reward you uh, for trying your best to keep your identity as a Muslim um, in this country and all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you in abundance. Um, now the topic is nurturing children. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He blessed us, favored us with so many different kind of blessings and bounties. We usually repeat this subject all the time. And repeating is very, very important because we need to remind ourselves because as human beings we tend to forget. Uh, and al insanu min al nisyan that the um, human being, the word insan came from, came from forgetfulness. So we need to remind ourselves about the great bounties of Allah, the Almighty, that He blessed us with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Noble Quran, in Surah Al-Kahf, in verse 46, He said in a very beautiful verse, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Al-Mal wal Banoon Zinatul Hayat al Dunya. والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا. Allah the Almighty said in this beautiful verse in Surah Al-Kahf in verse 46. He says that المال, the wealth, والبنون and children are the beauty of this world. المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا زينة 
the beauty adornment of this world. الصالحات, but what is more beneficial and what is more everlasting is baqiyat salihat which means the remembrance of Allah such as alhamdulillah, subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, the ibadah, the worship of Allah, that is everlasting and that will remain even in the next world. Khayrun inda rabbik and it is better uh, in the sight of your Lord. Thawaban wa khayrun amala and that is something that you would, you would like to do and you wish to have uh, the baqiyat salihat the good deeds, the good actions. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, he considers mal, the wealth, and children to be the beauty of this world. But at the same time, these beauties, these adornment of the world can become a test for us in this world. So in another verse, he says in Surah Al-Anfal, in verse 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ Just know, know all oh people, all oh believers, that your wealth and your children can be a test for you. There can be a trial and tribulation for you in this <coughs> world and in the next world. So there can be a form of test for you at the same time. So be careful. So while something is beautiful for you, there can be a test for you as well, according to the Quranic verses. Um, slightly, I want to touch upon, uh, just for the benefit of our wider audience and for myself as well. When you say test, how would you define test? So there can uh, uh, there can be a difficult uh, situation. There can be difficulties for us. So does it so, does it does it just to interrupt you mm -hmm. slightly there? Does it mean that if the children are a way to, of salvation to Jannah, yeah. can it be the other way around? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that can lead us to the way to Jahannam Allah prohibit and forbid. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he um, considers the children and wealth can be a form of test in this world, fitna in this world. But let's look at the beautiful blessing and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as children in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse in Surah Ash-Shura in verse 49, Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala says, Lillahi mulku samawati wal ard. The uh, heavens and the earth, the whole entire universe belongs to Allah the Almighty. He is the master. He is the owner of the universe. Lillahi mulku samawati wal ard. Yakhluku ma yasha. He creates whatever he wishes to create. Yakhluku ma yasha. Animals, human beings, creatures, insects, plants, whatever he, wish, he wishes to create, he creates. يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثَا Whomsoever he wishes, he gives him the girls, daughters. the daughters. Mm -hmm. Whomsoever he wishes, he gives him or her daughters. يَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ إِنَاثَا وَيَهَبُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ الذكور. And whomsoever he wishes, he gives him the sons. أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثَا And whomsoever he wishes, he gives him or her Daughters and sons, daughters and sons. وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَعَقِيمًا And whomsoever he wishes, he keep them without children. Without children. وَيَجْعَلُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَعَقِيمًا إِنَّهُ عَلِيمٌ قَدِيرٌ Indeed, he is the all-knowing and he is the most mighty, powerful. One of the beautiful aspects from this verse that we notice here, Allah puts it in order, daughters first and then the son. Good question, good point. You've, you've now, understood. Culturally, we know from mm. our country of origin, our roots, and alhamdulillah, a lot I would say have disappeared, but still there is an existence. There isn't, yeah. That whenever a daughter is born, <clears throat> yep. somehow now it won't be said in a loud manner or fashion, but Allah He's placing daughters first, first. presidency, then the son, where it's culturally we are doing it the other way around. How important is this aspect? You see, two things we learn from this verse, two important points that we learn from this verse. First of all, what you exactly have pointed out, Imam Mutawil uh, al-Sha'rawi, one of the very great commentators of the Holy Quran, he says, First of all, when you look at this verse, Allah the Almighty, he used a word called hiba. Hiba right. means gift which means you have no right over it. If Allah the Almighty, if he wants to give it, he gives it as a favor, as a blessing. But you cannot claim, it's not your right. So therefore he says, he gives him 
uh, whomsoever he wishes, he gives him daughters or sons. So hiba is gift. يعني ليست حقا ليست حقا لأحد وليست حقا لكل من ملك أسبابه. So this is not right of everyone. Then uh, the other aspect of the verse is it says that لأن uh, ثم تلاحظ أن الحق سبحانه وتعالى قدم الإناث على الذكور. Then he says mm. also you can see the inath the girls were the given daughter. the priorities. Yes. So the daughters were mentioned before the sons. Why? Because people in Jahiliya at the, at the time of in pre-Islamic era, at the time of ignorance, they used to see or they used to look at girls as a negative thing in the society, which still, still, still exists. And so therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used inath first. Subhanallah. And the other thing is also the, the, the access to that department of getting children. Has, has No one has the authority. No one has the authority to get into that department of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala children. Sometimes we have like in our society, uh, there are some liars, some imposters, uh, they would say, well, if you give me that much money, if you give me this, I can guarantee a son for you, I can guarantee a child for you. Not, not only that, but even there are certain things that we come across, obviously they're not authentic, or how authentic they are, if you can confirm that. Such and such, so and so have said, if you recite this verse or that verse or this dua so many times after this mm -hmm. hour or that particular hour, you will be blessed with a son or mm -hmm. a daughter. Now, how true or authentic are these such Meaning, such first things? of all, we condemn anybody who uh, claims or who confirms that he can give a child. He, can, he, can, he has the right or he's the authority to uh, you know, provide a child because this mm. is a, a, a complete secret department of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ilmul ghaib. No one has the access. But yes, what we can do, we can make dua for one another. Mm. We can supplicate for each other. That's something that we can do. So if you come to me and ask for a child, then I can, maximum I can do, I can make dua for you. And you can make dua for me as well. But we cannot say that we can provide, or we can give the children because this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's authority. Now the other um, element that you've discussed that a lot of, um, um, a lot of, um, People, um, our views, is especially if they want, they want, they want to find out that, for an instance, if they want something, they would rather go to a scholar or a person who is a sheikh. Yeah. Now, I want to touch upon how important is the dua of the parents themselves. Yeah. So, meaning, like we should make the first of all priorities that we make dua for ourselves, but mm. at the same time, there's no harm asking other people to make dua as well, because we do not know whose dua may be accepted, accepted by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So. Um, so this is something really important that we have to be careful that our people, because they do not have knowledge, person gives guarantee, which is not allowed, which is he has no authority to do, but only he can make dua for that person. So you have to be very, very careful. So So children are a great ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world. But when we say the ni'mah, we always have to link the ni'mah with the responsibilities. Hmm. No ni'mah, no hiba, no gifts, no blessings come without the responsibilities. So again, we go back to the hadith that we recited last week and the week before, where previously, كُلُّكُمْ رَعِينْ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِ Every one of you is responsible and you will be questioned about your responsibility on the Day of Judgment. And then obviously the hadith goes on and we mentioned, we elaborated in our previous programs. So we are all responsible. And most importantly, we're responsible for our children because children are a great ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith uh, uh, narrated by Imam Muslim rahimahullah in the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانِ انْقَطَعَ عَنْهُ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ That if a person leaves this world, if a man dies, um, then every amal, Every deeds, every action stops, discontinues. Illa min thalath, except three things which continue. Then he said, Sadaqah jariya, a charity they, that you give in the path of Allah, a charity that you do something for people, you help someone, you make a house for somebody, you uh, probably uh, make a tea well for someone, 
you make um, uh, uh, you supply water for somebody. So a charity that can remain in this world and this will continuously go to your account. So sadaqa jariya is something that continues even after the demise or the death of a person. Then Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "Our ilm yuntafa'u bihi," a knowledge that can be benefited, the people can benefit. So maybe you have written an article, you uh, gave a speech, you, uh, you, wrote, you wrote a book. Uh, this is, uh, as long as someone benefits or people benefit from those, you will be benefited and you'll be rewarded by Allah the Almighty. And then the last thing, a walad salih yad'u lahu, a pious child, a pious child that will, which will make dua for you. So the dua of children will be continuously benefiting the diseased, uh, the, de 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 the person who dies, or the parents, or the guardians. So, So, we are responsible for our children, and we have to make sure the well-being, the welfare of our children. Um, so, therefore, we decided the topic today is nurturing children. So, what are our responsibilities towards our children. Normally we see in our society, many people, they only talk about the rights of parents. But hardly you see people are talking about the rights of children. Just the way the parents have right over us, also the children have rights over their parents. So many people, they fail to realize or to understand the rights of children. So um, what are the rights of children over us? So first of all, physical nourishment. We are responsible to provide to make sure that our children are eating good food, healthy food. Many parents uh, are not aware or conscious about the food, so they're giving the children continuously the junk food, crisps, you know, fizzy drinks, unhealthy food continuously, um, uh, the chips and you know. So basically, well. things that are an obstruction for our child to develop a healthy lifestyle or healthy it's nourishment. A, it, it is. It is. An, it is a religious duty. Um, I have heard from a scholar saying that you know when you have junk food, it creates a junk mind, and when there is a junk mind, it doesn't provide. It doesn't produce anything. And not only that, we know our health service, the National Health Service. A lot of articles, a lot of scientific evidences are there out there for parents especially to ensure that as a parent they nourish their children, feed them with the best highly nutritious food. Exactly. To ensure, yeah. Because we have an issue of obesity in this country. Abs absolutely and as a correct. citizen of the country, we have to all collectively to do not take And as Muslims, this is, this is a top priority because we are, in Allah kataba al-ihsan ala kulli shay, we must be excellent in everything, in, in every field. So when we feed our children, we need to make sure that we, they're eating the correct good food. Now, the other element that links with the food here is the wealth nourishment is the earning of the parents. Exactly, yes. So, halal. Yes. So, so, now, how important is this effect and what sort of effect will it have on our children? You see, um, there is, um, uh, we hear from the, the people from the medical department, they say when you have, when someone's smoking at home, it kind of affects the children. So similarly, we say when there are sins, when there is something that is uh, not permitted by Allah, prohibited by Allah, the muharramat, that have also a direct effect on our children. So when, when we are feeding our children the, the wrong and haram and unhealthy food, uh, that have an effect as well on our children. So that means not only the food should be healthy, but also the earnings of the parents should also be definitely, halal and tayyib. Def definitely. It's something point that we, many of us we don't realize. Halal food is, is very, very important for the well-being of our children. And we can see these differences actually in, our, in, in reality. Mm. When you see like when you go to some of the places where parents are really careful about halal food, halal income, then you see like children, you can see the results in children the way they behave, the way the characters are, the way they conduct, the, 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 the good memory that they have, the, the blessed with the good memory, all these things we can see. Also, we make sure that, that our children are on a healthy, in a healthy environment. So they're not exposed to like domestic violence, they're not exposed to fights and quarreling, constant quarreling and arguments. Uh, they're not exposed to uh, the, the dirt and like, you know, uh, unhygienic things. Inna Allah jameel, wa yuhibbul jamal. Indeed, Allah the Almighty, He is beautiful and He loves the, everything that is beauty. And also, النظافة من الإيمان والطهور شطر الإيمان That beauty, the cleanliness is part of and half of our faith, as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said. So we yep. make sure that our children are living in a healthy 
clean and beautiful environment. I have seen some of our parents like they keep their children in a very dirty, uh, you know, houses. You know, uh, you, you probably like no, no, no healthy or no, uh, no good person can enter. So we have to make sure the houses are clean and, and healthy. And the other aspect of it is, when when we see in these kind of contexts that. Yes, we should always encourage our children to engage in a healthy debate or discussion. The, uh, the question of asking, because sometimes what we do see culturally, we tend to make our children go silent on issues that you wouldn't understand. You're still yes, young. Yes. You shouldn't yeah, ask I mean, this question this is good. or that question. Exactly like I was mentioning that I was going to actually come to this, uh, meaning like we need to give importance to our children. Mm. We need to give importance <laughs> because uh, we have seen like, uh, in many places, many parts of the world, the children are not giving any import, are not given any importance. So they're l they're looked or viewed as insignificant people. Mm. But don't forget that children are very clever. At times, they understand more the than us. Intelligence is growing. Mm. At times, they understand more than the adults. I remember when I was young, I was very young. I understand. I know. I remember everything that was done to me. Mashallah, like, you're still young. <laughs> when I was like, Zakallah, you look younger than me. <laughs> um, uh, so when I was like really like when I was a child, at the age of six, seven, I remember everything. Who told me what? How they treated me? What they told me? And it's I still remember mind. them. It's the yeah. child's brain. Yes, I still remember them. And and I I, I always put uh, uh, the children in my shoes. And I see like you no, know, these children are the understanding. So don't insignificant their 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 consciousness. Um, um, and even the modern technology they discovered or they proved that you know the children can hear from even like from the mother's womb you see when when there's music played uh, when when there's music um, uh, played you see children sometimes the children are Moving. Yeah. Yes, we'll hold on to that. It's a very important discussion. There's one of the topics uh, that I wanted to discuss, but inshallah, it's time for a short break. We'll continue okay. that after Shana. the break. My dear viewers, we have been listening to the topic today, nurturing children. It's a very important topic, a time effective topic. Our Sheikh here touched upon the roles and responsibility, not only the parents, but the rights that the children have on us. Inshallah, we'll continue our discussion. There are many, many much more things to discuss. Do stay tuned with us. We'll be right back after a short break. You're watching to us, The Origin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.